Our videos explain the basic principles of tracking adjustments. They do not form a comprehensive guide. Adjustments should only be performed by a competent person with reference to the instructions of the correct maintenance and repair manual for the vehicle. With the road wheel removed, we can see the right hand track rod and track rod end assembly on this 10 year old Ford Mondeo. In the United States, these are called the tie rod and tie rod end. This car is looking its age, but the rods and its threads are in good condition due to regular tracking checks and corrections. First job is to clean away any dirt. Then use a wire brush to clear the threads of any dirt or rust. If your tracking has not been serviced for some time, it may need a good clean up. A little penetrating oil on the lock nut and threads may make things much smoother. You may want to leave this five minutes to soak in. Where the track rod joins the steering rack, it comes through a rubber gator. This must not be twisted when turning the rods or it may be damaged. The rubber can stick to the rod over time, you can usually just push it back to free it. If it still grips, then a lubricant can be applied. A drip of oil off the dipstick should be sufficient. Pull it back into place and you should find it turns freely. If it's still tight, you may have to release whichever style of clip is fitted to the gator while you adjust. So here we have the track rod with its threaded section that is screwed into the track rod end and the locking nut on the thread. This is a round rod, in order to turn it we use mole grips or swan neck pliers to grip it. The rods sometimes have a flattened area or hexagon shaped area so it can be turned with a regular spanner. You should have a flattened or hexagon area on the track rod end so it can be supported by a spanner or wrench to avoid damaging the ball joint or rubber seal. When untightening or tightening the lock nut, always hold the track rod end level to avoid damaging it. It's a useful tip to apply a marker to allow turning the rods accurately. A piece of tape is adequate. We may well need to turn the rods just a quarter or an eighth of a turn when making small adjustments. When we need to compare both rods remaining visible threads, we can measure with a ruler. Here we have 21mm remaining visible threads on this rod. Or we can count the visible threads to accurately compare to the other side. We have 14 threads remaining visible on this rod. Either method will suffice. One full turn of each rod will make a certain amount of difference to the tow angle on this vehicle, but this will differ to other vehicles with different threads and different suspension geometry. Another tip is to check the tow angle, then adjust both rods one full turn and note in your manual the adjustment achieved from one full turn of each rod on your particular vehicle. So in future you can use this to estimate required adjustments more accurately. When adjusting the rods by measured turns, we can observe the marker to make an accurate turn, a quarter turn or half turn, whatever value we are wanting. After each rod adjustment, retighten the lock nut as specified in the maintenance and repair manual. Again, support the track rod end level while you tighten the lock nut. On most production vehicles, the track rods are the only adjustable part of the front suspension, so look after them, especially if you have your own gauge and they tend to make regular adjustments to keep tracking spot on and maintain a centred steering wheel as parts and tyres gradually wear. A thin smear of grease over the remaining visible threads goes a long way to protecting them from the elements and making future adjustments easier.